thoughts of the first intentional method of hand forming clay. Um, and it's a good starting point for all kinds of projects. You first want to cut off about an orange worth of clay from your slab using your string tool and holding it tight between your hands. Okay, you take that clay and you know, push that into a round ball shape. If you get any folds in your clay, you want to smooth that out, getting as little air pockets in there as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, once you have your round shape, you're going to take your thumb and you're going to stick that right into the middle. And you're going to go about a half an inch to a quarter inch from the bottom. And you can sense where you are by using your fingers on the other side. So you're, the first thing you're going to do is open up your bottom. So I'm going to be pinching the clay, but it's less of a pinch and more of a smoothing motion. You're using the pads of your fingers and the pad of your thumb, and you're putting more pressure on the inside and using your outside fingers as a backstop. You want those part clay particles to stay tight as they're widening out. So I'm just going to turn this in my hand, pinching and turning, pinching and turning, staying to the bottom. And once my bottom is opened up, I can start working my way in a spiraling motion up the side of the pot, pinching and turning as I go. Okay, if you notice any crackings uh, on, on the rim or the sides, you can come back and smooth that out as you go. The idea here is to keep a uniform thickness as you're turning. Okay, once you get your height, you can start working on your rim. If you notice any cracking, you can come back and smooth that out. And if it gets a little uneven, you can take that and tap that on the table, get it back into shape. Once your pinch pot is close to the size that you want, what you do is you'll set it down rim side on the table and let it rest. Once it's leather hard, you can come back with your cheese grater and clean up the outside and use a ribbon and clean up the inside. So another way to hand build is using slabs. Uh, when you cut your clay to roll out a slab, you want to be mindful of the proportionate of your pattern. So you'll cut across the long way of your clay using your wire tool. Okay, and you want to make sure that you have enough, at least in one direction, to cover the, the length or the width of your piece. So what I'll do is I'll start by rolling just a little bit to give it the length. And I'll roll it once and flip it over. Roll it again, flip it over. Okay, now that I can see I have enough, I can start going this way with it. And the other important thing is to make sure that your clay is equal, equal uh, thickness throughout. So you do that by using uh, guide sticks. You can use dowels, you can use rulers, you can use stacked magazines. Whatever it is, it's, it, it has to be the same thickness on either side. So you'll roll that slab out, flipping each time. And you can you know when you're done when you can hear your roller riding along the wooden slats or your dowels. Okay. This is probably my last roll. There we go. Okay. So now that I've rolled it out, I'm going to take my pattern and I'll set it on top. Make sure I have enough. I'll cut off any extra that I don't need. 
And one of the great things about hand building is there's virtually no waste. So what I will do is take this clay, I'll dip it in my water, and I'll set it back into my clay bag so that it's ready the next time I use it. Okay, so now what you need to do is tighten your particles. You're gonna take your credit card and you're gonna smooth that credit card across your slab. What this does is tightens the clay particles up so that when we ask this slab to bend one way or another, it's not gonna crack on us. It's gonna give us a nice strong slab it also helps get any memory out of the clay from when it was moved around before. Okay, so this slab is ready to go. Um, if I was going to use this somewhere else or roll out multiple slabs, what I would do is uh, to take it off the wear board. I would set another board on top, put my hand underneath and flip them. always keeping your your slabs flat on the board until you're ready to use them okay when hand building bigger forms it's a lot easier to use coils uh, to make coils what you want to do is start with a, a handful of clay and you want to squeeze that into a log shape Okay, and then you're just basically going to roll that across the surface, adding equal pressure all the way across with your hands. If you go too, too much pressure, you can end up with an oval instead of a circle, and we want a circle. So to repair that, you tap that down, and you can twist that coil in opposite directions on either end, sort of making a, a cruller, and then roll it out again. What I like to do is put my hands together and go one way and then the other and then I'll flip that coil over go one way and then the other so you'll notice that the board that you're working on will pull the moisture out and because of the great amount of surface area you'll your coils will dry out really quick so it's a good idea to spritz your working surface just a little bit keep your coils from drying out. So a good rule of thumb when it comes to thickness is to roll the coil out about as thick as your thumb. Okay, I can cut this off. Okay, it's also a good idea to make about 10 at a time keeping them moist, whoops, by giving them a little spritz or setting them on a piece of plastic. And that way, when you're ready to build, you have multiple coils. Uh, and in order to attach the coils or to build with the coils, what we'll do is we will form them into a circle and then you want to cut the coil at an angle. Whoops, there goes my X-Acto knife. And this is where the magic words of clay come in uh, called scratch and attach. And once you know scratch and attach, you can pretty much do anything with clay. So what you'll want to do is scratch that area up. And what we're doing here is we're loosening up those clay particles on either side and then connecting that. And then you can smooth that out. And you just scratched and attached. Okay. The reason why we cut it at an angle rather than straight across is we get a, a greater surface for connecting uh, the clay and it makes for a stronger joint. Okay, 
actually this is so wet <laughs> if the clay was actually too dry what you could do is come in with a little bit of water and add that to that connection scratching and attaching so as you build with coils you'll scratch the next layer the bottom layer and scratch your next layer and attach now you have a choice of either smoothing it out or keeping the coils intact but from there you can build big bases or any type of sculpture so as you're working on your piece you want to keep it moist until you're able to come back to it and finish it so what you'll do is wrap it in a uh, grocery bag the produce bags are excellent you don't want to use one of the shopping bags that they give you because those have cornstarch and it will dry your project out so i'm going to come back to this piece so how i'll wrap it is i'll put the plastic right up against the piece just like this and I will store it in one of these containers. Uh, this is a great use for these uh, spring mix boxes. They'll keep your clay moist. If you're gonna be away for, for more than a couple of days, I would suggest taking a sponge, a damp sponge, and setting it beside your piece and sealing the box up. And that way it'll create a humid environment to keep your piece moist and ready for the next time you're able to work on it.